Hey guys, an evil snowman here, bringing you another guide to Dota 2, this time covering Skelling King. Hellfire Blast is a targeted ability that will stun an enemy for 2 seconds and slowing them for 4 seconds. In addition, it will also do 200 damage to the target initially, as well as 50 damage over the 4 seconds that the slow is applied. Hellfire Blast costs 140 mana with an 8 second cooldown. Vampiricora is a passive ability that grants Skeleton King and any nearby allies a 30% lifesteal at level 4. This effect also stacks with any other forms of lifesteal available, such as Vlad's and Helm and the Dominator. Critical Strikes is another passive ability that gives Skeleton King a 15% chance to crit for 2.75 times normal damage. Reincarnation is an auto-casting ability that, provided Skeleton King has 140 mana on death and the ability is not on its 60 second cooldown, will bring Skeleton King back to life after 3 seconds. Upon his reincarnation, all nearby enemy units will be slowed by 30% for a small duration afterwards. You want to be maxing your stun first, so take it at levels 1, 3, 5 and 8. You may be wondering why we don't take Vampire Cora right at the start. Obviously this being a very good ability. 15% uh, lifesteal this early in the game is quite good. The problem is it will also affect your creeps. So, and this will cause them to push the lane quite significantly. Then at level 2 and 4 you want to take stats. This is unusual but compared to the other things with the critical strike not being that great early on. The pers your attack speed just isn't fast enough to keep up with it. Uh, and, of course, the problem discussed with Vampire Cora previously. Stats are probably the best thing to go for at this point. They're really just filling in spaces. Critical Strike starts to become viable at level 7, so take it 7, 9, 12, and 14. Then, in the very late game, when people, when you're not going to be worried about pushing lanes, or you're actually actively trying to push lanes, you should take your Vampire Cora at 10, 13, 15, and 17. Reincarnation is just ungodly good. It's so very, very good. So you should take it at level 6, 11, and 16, which is the standard. Skeleton King will be played in the side lane. You're not going to be mad, and you're definitely not going to be in the jungle. So starting off, you should take a Quelling Blade and 3 Iron Branches. This will give you the stats to allow you to last hit a lot easier than if you didn't have these. Also, pick up a Tango's and a Healing Salve to keep yourself in the lane. After that, you'll want to be going for your Power Treads. Since you have a ranged stun, you may be asked to gank at some point in the early game. When you're going for your Power Treads, you'll want to be picking up a Belt of Strength, then the Boots of Speed, then the Gloves of Haste. This will give you the extra strength to give you a little bit more damage and again boosting your last hit and potential. After that you'll want to be picking up an armlet. The armlet's active is very good, however it does have its drawback of draining health. But since Skeleton King only really has his Q to worry about, managing the armlet won't be too difficult. And then even in the later game when the Vampire Horror comes off, this will counteract the draining health from Unholy Strength. To make sure that you're never caught without enough mana to use your reincarnate upon death, you should grab a soul ring. This way, every time you're getting close to dying, just hit that button and you'll be guaranteed to have enough to get back to life. Next up, go for an Assault Curus. Your team will love you because of the attack speed aura and it will synergize really well with your next item, Skull Basher. For your last slot, pick up a Monkey King Bar. The raw damage from this item is really high and the passive will help you out when it seems that your basher just isn't procking. If the game ends up going long enough that you have enough money for it, you can always upgrade your skull basher into an abyssal blade, but this will rarely happen, the game should be over by the time you get to this point. In the early game of Skeleton King, you should be farming and taking part in ganks when possible. If you don't get enough farm, Skeleton King is essentially just a mega creep, and that's not very good to be playing with. Going into the mid game, you should be pushing lanes and taking part in team fights. As discussed before, your Vampire Cora will help you push the lane, as this applies to your creeps as well. 
This being a negative in the early game is now a positive from here on out. In team fights, you may be required to initiate, but you really shouldn't be. If you are, just walk in and try and stun whoever has the most disable on the enemy team. Please remember that Dota is a very situational game. Things can change on a game by game basis. Although this guide will give you a good foundation, please feel free to deviate and experiment on your own. After all, finding things out on your own is half the fun of Dota. Thanks very much for watching this guide. If you liked it, feel free to subscribe, like and favourite down below, and comment on anything you think I should change, or perhaps might be of use to anyone else watching this guide. I'm an evil snowman, and I'll see you in the next video.